In this tutorial in Photo Director 365, we're going to show you an overview of some of the tools you can use on simple shapes to create objects like what you see on the screen. You can create your own graphic images or you can create elements that you layer behind text on your photographs. So let's get started. Now that I'm in my edit panel, I'm going to go over to my icons on the right and click my shapes object, which is the square. Click on that and I can choose the option that I want. Let's start with a polygon. I'll take this and just draw the shape in the middle of the screen. Here I have my simple shape. I'll change the color on it for now. Let's change it to a softer blue and click on OK. So here is my shape. I can rotate it. I can do a few other things with it, but really not a lot. To do some advanced editing, I need to get into my effect area. So I go to the layer that that shape belongs to and click on the FX button on the right side. That opens up all these options for designing my shape. So let's see some of the things that we can do. We're going to spend some time on bevel and emboss because it's very easy to use and very impactful. I'm going to turn it on and open up the controls. The default blending mode for highlights is screen and for shadows is multiply. You can use the drop downs to try some other variations if you'd like, but that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. There are several bevel types you can use. The default is the inner bevel, and you see a hint of it on the screen. I'm going to increase the size. Now you get to see exactly what it looks like. There is our inner bevel. If I want to add the depth and move that slider over, that increases the shadows that I see in the bevel. So it actually tends to make it a more dramatic bevel. But you're dealing with the apparent light on the bevel when you do that. You also can go up or down. If I click on the arrow for direction and click down, that basically inverts it. You can also use the soften slider to soften the edges between the lighter and darker parts. And that's some variation. Besides changing the direction for up and down, you can actually change the light source in one of 360 degrees by rotating this around the circle or typing in a degree or using the up and down arrow to move exactly where you want to go. There is a slider here called light attitude. It goes from 0 to 90. The default is 45 and it does change it when you go up or down. But I don't find a lot of value in it so I basically don't use it a lot. So that's what it looks like when you're working with this particular shape with an inner bevel. Let's use one of the other ones. I click down and I have an outer bevel. Now what the outer bevel does, you notice it leaves the basic shape alone and it puts a bevel in the area outside of the shape. Once again, you can control the depth, which gives that sense of dark and light and the size. And again, you can soften the difference between the two on the bevel. So that's your outer bevel. The third one is emboss. Let's click on that. Now emboss is interesting because it gives you an outer bevel and an inner bevel. And it adjusts the sizes of them at the same time, not independent of each other. So as the outer bevel gets smaller, so does the inner bevel and you can increase the shadowing too on the depth and whether it's softer or more distinct. Again, you can modify the light source as you could before. So the emboss style is basically both of them combined. The next one is called pillow emboss. You notice you still have the dual. Here we're, here we're going inside of the bevel on this one, the pillow emboss. I think it's the idea is you put your head in a pillow and you, and the pillow sinks down, it caves in. And that's what you see when you do that. Of the, th of the four available, I would probably use the simple inner and outer most, but you have all four available in bevels for your objects. Let's go back to a simple inner bevel. I'm going to turn that off. And I can either reset it by clicking the arrow going back or I can uncheck it. It will save the settings but it will not apply them. 
The next setting is border. Let's turn the borders on and show you what you can do with borders. Now obviously we can combine bevels and borders and we'll do that in more advanced lessons. You have several directions for your border, outside, inside, or center. And it's easier to see if I make the border larger. So we'll make a large border. Here it's obviously on the outside of my object. When I click here it's on the inside of my object, so it's maximum size is the size of my object. And then the other option I have is center. And center basically goes from the edge of the object outside and inside both. So uh, that kind of splits the difference. So the actual size of the object is half the distance of my border here. And so you can change the color if you want to. Uh, any of the colors you have, I can click here and choose them from this, or I can use my color picker. If I have other colors in my project I want to use. Let's change the border to a yellow. Click on OK. You can also actually use a different option for fill type on the border. You can use a gradient. I'll click here, and now I have a gradient. The default is black and white. You see it reflected on the screen. Now we can control that and we can slide more black or more toward white by clicking on this little tiny line between them. There are other things we can do with gradients. When we get to the next tutorial, we're going to talk about the gradient tool for the face of your object. All that we say there will apply to the border of your object as well. So no, we're not going to go into a lot of detail on the gradient border in this particular case. But I'm just going to take the size back down and let's make it more dark than light. And so it's a different way in which I can look at the border. Notice it says border 1. Why is that significant? Because you can have multiple borders. Now right now I have a center border for border 1. I'm going to click a plus. And now I have a border 2. And the default is outside. So let's add another border. Let's change the color of this. Let's make it a pink. And let's enlarge it. So now I have a second border. And I have all the variations on the second border that I had on the first border. I can make it color. I can make it a gradient. I could change the opacity. I can change the size. So that's my second. And this one I happen to go with an outside border. If I want to make it go away, I click on the minus. Let me do a plus again. And now I have a third border. Let's increase the size so you can see. It too happens to be an outside border. I can change the color of that, anything I like. Or I can make it an inside border if I want. And now it's inside my object. Let's go back to outside. So you can have multiple borders active on the same object and customize each of them to fit your needs. I'm going to delete this, the, this one by clicking on the minus. And now I'm back to two borders. And now I'm back to one. So that's the border control. So we have, we've covered bevel and emboss and borders. Let's go to the third setting that we're going to look at, which is inner shadow. Now a shadow is a little bit like a border, only it, it actually just covers part of the object because it, by definition it's a shadow. And when it comes to an inner shadow, you also can control the light source, where the shadow is, the distance. And here again, you notice the shadow is taking area, because it's inner, it's taking real estate from inside the object, not outside the object. And the choke basically makes it sharper and larger or fuzzier and smaller. Then you can control the size of the shadow. And here's where you notice the choke a lot. I can choke it down to that or choke it up to this and change the distance and do some really nice effects just by modifying these variations inside my shadow controls. And of course I can control the opacity of my shadow. Right now my shadow is black. And we have some drawing modes. We're not going to deal with those variations in this tutorial. 
So those are some of the capabilities of the first three tools when editing shapes in PhotoDirector. In the next tutorial, we're going to deal with the following five options so that you can make some very impressive objects for your production in PhotoDirector 365.